I've spent five episodes talking about CG trailers, so we should start focusing on trailers that use actual gameplay. Gameplay trailers can be tricky because a lot of time a game is in its really early state. If a developer hires a production company, then they have to translate to a second party what they want their game to look, sound, and feel like using an engine that isn't ready for release. Activision at E3 2007 was really smart with Call of Duty 4 because they cut back and forth frantically between different missions, showcasing a popular lesson. Make a little go a long way. A gameplay demonstration is usually one long look at a particular moment from the game. Sometimes the scene isn't included in the final product. A gameplay trailer is much more broad, often encapsulating most, if not all, of the different experiences you can have in the game. The challenge in producing a trailer like this is showcasing the story, characters, weapons, environments, and other unique gameplay elements without looking and feeling like that's all you're doing. Call of Duty has always put their gameplay front and center in their advertising, and it's no accident the series has produced some of the best trailer edits in the business. Since the first Call of Duty for the PC was in pre-alpha, Activision and Infinity Ward have worked with LA-based trailer production house Ant Farm to show their upcoming releases in the best possible light. Ant Farm has also cut trailers for Assassin's Creed, Far Cry 3, Rage, Aliens Colonial Marines, and Splinter Cell Blacklist, as well as the Call of Duty Ghosts gameplay reveal at the recent Xbox One unveiling. Ant Farm's close relationship with all the development teams that have worked on Call of Duty over the years has granted them a unique level of access to each game's development. Our so-called leaders prostituted us to the West, destroyed our culture, our economies, our honor. Every trailer they work on begins with a script. The script for Modern Warfare's E3 2007 trailer was written by Executive Creative Director Rob Troy who is now the co-president of Ant Farm. Oftentimes, other writers and producers are brought into the script's development. During this process, Ant Farm cast famed Russian theater actor Eugene Lazarev to provide the voice of the game's central villain, Imran Zakhaev. Infinity Ward enjoyed his performance so much, they cast him in the game as well. Almost all of the trailer's dialogue also made the transition into the final product. 50,000 people used to live in the city. Now it's a ghost town. The ESRB even allowed Lazarev to read the trailer's rating pending notification in Russian, a brilliant touch, because at the time, it was legal. Rating of this game is still not determined. Once the script is finished, the dialogue is recorded, and the music is composed or purchased, Ant Farm uses their proprietary methods for capturing footage from each Call of Duty game. Instead of cutting up the game's cinemas or showing every moment from first person, they can move the camera freely through each environment, capturing the perfect angle for each dramatic scene. They then work closely with the developers in Activision to make sure they're capturing the very best elements of the game. This is why it's fun creating pop blocks for these trailers, because it's like watching an in-depth developer interview without the dull, uncomfortable interview. Come on, we need to get moving before the search parties get here. Instead of going chronologically through the trailer, let's go mission by mission, analyzing where and when each of the 60 plus shots in the trailer takes place. The E3 2007 trailer shows a little over half the missions in Modern Warfare. It skips the tutorial, covering a moving tank in the mission War Pig, the nighttime hunt in Mission 12 Safe House, and avoid spoiling the last four levels, including the bonus mission, Mile High Club. Mission 2, Crew Expendable, takes place aboard a freighter floating in the Bering Strait and is featured heavily in the trailer. We follow the mission from beginning to end as Soap McTavish and his fellow SAS commandos are deployed via helicopter to retrieve a package and then desperately escape while the ship is sinking. Mission 3, The Coup, follows President Yasir al-Fulani as he's transported to Khaled al-Assad. We first saw the tragic end to this mission in Modern Warfare's gameplay reveal. The next five levels are shown very briefly, some in just one shot. We see Captain Price rescue Nikolai and view a firefight in night vision. Sergeant Paul Jackson blow open the door to a TV station and helicopter cover in Mission 6, The Bog. We get a 21-frame sneak peek at the mission Hunted inside a greenhouse and a couple tastes of the carnage in Mission 8, Death From Above. Mission 10, Shock and Awe, and its follow-up, Aftermath, 
carry a lot of weight in Modern Warfare's story, and the trailer goes back to them frequently. This clip from Aftermath is an interesting play on the viewer's expectations, as most of these shots are seen from outside of any one soldier's perspective, where this view of the devastation is eventually experienced through the eyes of a dying soldier. Mission 13 and 14 are both flashbacks to when Captain Price was sent to Pripyat in Ukraine in 1996. The location, along with the line from the final version of the level, opens the E3 2007 trailer. If you blink, you might miss a 28-frame shot of Mission 15, Heat, and Mission 17, Ultimatum, ends with Soap and Company witnessing a missile launch in the mountains of Russia. Mission 16, Sins of the Father, has nine shots scattered throughout the trailer, showing the pursuit of Imran Zakhaev's son, Victor. All of these shots were built and photographed by Ant Farm, and then ordered and approved by Activision and Infinity Ward. When I asked this trailer's writer and director, Rob Troy, what it was like to work with the minds behind Call of Duty, he responded, There's a reason Infinity Ward is considered a AAA developer. They're passionate in every aspect of what they do. We've been fortunate enough to work with them from their earliest days up through the present. It's always a collaborative effort with various members of their team bringing many ideas to the table to help fulfill the final vision. It's an incredibly challenging job, but the end results are always fulfilling. Whether they are recreating interactive moments or conservatively using footage from film and television, production companies have to take a handful of moments and stretch them into something indistinguishable from the finished product. This involves cutting like lightning. In some cases, even a second is too much time. The longer you hold on a shot, the more time you give your viewer to place it chronologically in your game's storyline. The more they know about the story ahead of time, the less surprised and possibly affected they'll be when they play it. You also don't want to show all the cool stuff in one go. Save some bosses or missions that have unique gameplay surprises for trailers closer to the game's launch. If you take up more time than you need spoiling too much of the game, there won't be anything you can use to keep on selling it. Ant Farm and other trailer houses like it really understands the attention span of the average consumer. If you jumble up your footage enough, it can be hard to tell the difference between the end of one level and the beginning of another. The key is making each progressive shot more exciting while it ramps up with the music. Other trailers that do a very good job at this are the Gears of War 2 launch trailer, the TGS 2006 trailer for Devil May Cry 4, the E3 2011 trailer for Uncharted 3, and the very first debut trailer for Modern Warfare. A special thanks to Rob Troy and Ant Farm for their help with this episode. If you want to see all of their work, you can check it out at theantfarm.net. I may or may not be back in two weeks, depending on how crazy things get with E3, but I will definitely be talking about all of the awesome trailers we're about to see on Twitter at Game Trailers VO. See you next time. See all of our shows and game reviews now on the brand new GT app on Xbox Live and the GT Originals iOS app too.